This time, we look at the Royal Enfield Scram 411. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. The big news this week is that Royal Enfield have finally released the all new Scram 411 model. This has to be one of the worst kept secrets in motorcycling and people have been expecting the model for some time. The new machine is of course heavily based on the Himalayan. This was released back in 2016. I suspect that Covid has played some part in Royal Enfield having taken six years to finally release another machine based on the same platform. And of course the two machines have a great number of components. The engine and chassis are both the same. The machine even makes use of the Himalayas 15 litre fuel tank. But there are some substantial differences. Most noticeable is of course the switch from a 21 inch to a 19 inch front wheel. This presumably indicates that the machine is going to be more road orientated and should make the bike a little bit more nimble. Not that the Himalayan is actually a non-nimble bike, it actually handles very nicely through corners, but the new machine promises to be even better. As with the Himalayan, the front brake is a single disc which is 300mm in diameter. There's a 240mm disc on the rear and Bybury calipers are used front and rear just as on the Himalayan. In addition to the smaller wheel, front suspension travel is down slightly to 190mm. Rear suspension stays the same at 180mm. This has the effect of reducing the seat height slightly to 795mm. The seat is slightly more padded of anything than the Himalayans was and is also a dual unit rather than the separate units found in the Himalayan. All this should hopefully make the machine a little bit more accessible for shorter riders. Not that the Himalayan is a particularly tall bike, it must be said. Aside from the front wheel, the other most obvious change is the removal of those side frames. This means of course that the, the new bike lacks the luggage carrying capacity of the old Himalayan, but it does shave off a few kilos, in fact 6.5 kilos has been removed from the bike according to Royal Enfield's claims. And this slight drop in weight, along with the new wheel, should mean the machine is a little bit more nimble. These changes have also produced a slight reduction in wheelbase and again this may aid agility. As on the Himalayan, the engine is the single overhead cam two valve air cool unit. This produces 24.3 horsepower at 6,500 RPM with 26 uh, foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. It's a very useful and user-friendly engine. At this time, we don't know whether the gearing has been raised to accommodate a more road-orientated design, but it may well be exactly the same as on the original Himalayan. Overall, the new machine presents cleaner lines than the Himalayan. The frame's gone, mean that the light is now mounted in a more conventional way. And this seems to be a cheaper halogen light as opposed to a more modern LED system. The clocks and dials have also changed and resemble more those used on the new 350s. It also has the trip navigation system. Now, I'm not sure about the system really as it links to your phone. And after all, we change our phones on a regular basis. So I suspect that in a few years time, this is a system which will be of little use as our phones have been replaced and it's no longer compatible. But it's still a nice touch. And the clocks present a very clean, tidy, fresh look to them. The position of the foot pegs does not seem to have changed, although the bars do seem a little bit lower. And this is of course in keeping with the more road orientation of the new machine. 
and should give you more of a crouch into the wind, although it's still very upright and looks extremely comfortable. One aesthetic element I'm not sure about is the new flat boards that have replaced the metal frames on the side of the tank. These sort of look okay, I'm just not sure about them, and I really do like the functionality of the old frames. On the road, the handling of the machine should be really engaging. The Harris frame is excellent, so it should be great for carving in traffic on the daily commute. And from what we can see, the bike doesn't seem to have sacrificed too much of the Himalayans off-road chops, so it should be great for running down the odd trail also. It should be a great all-rounder. The tyres are essentially the same as those fitted the Himalayan, although of course the front is only 19 inch. These should offer a good combination of grip across multiple surfaces, and so far on the Himalayan I have to say they perform very well. According to Royal Enfield's engine website, the machine is available in about half a dozen different colour schemes. These all look really nice and it will all be down to your personal taste which one you prefer. I really like the red and white one, I think that for me really works. The others I still think look great, I just prefer that one. Royal Enfield are clearly optimistic about this new machine. It's been released in India, Europe and the USA pretty much simultaneously in May. There's no word on price but we can expect it to be a similar price range to that of the Himalayan, perhaps even slightly cheaper, as of course it's got slightly less kit on it. But we'll wait and see. Personally, I can't wait to see how this bike is going to perform on the road. Royal Enfield are really brave things at the moment, and they're really expanding their range. So let's see what happens over the next couple of years. Either way, this machine may well offer whole new markets, to the Royal Enfield brand. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thank you very much for watching. And see you next time.